on industrial robotics, of course, size and speed, well, historically, they just don't mix. I'm with Dan Hazley. He's director of sales and marketing for Kawasaki Robotics. Uh, Dan, we're standing next to a classic packaging application and a very, very large unit, and it's just flying. Tell me about it. Yeah, this is uh, one of the fastest palletizing robots in the industry. It can palletize at 130 kilogram payload. It's very fast, and uh, actually it's very energy efficient also. One thing that it can do is uh, feed electricity back into the grid. It actually uses the braking power of the motors and feeds that uh, uh, electricity back into the grid, so it's saving CO2 emissions, saving electricity for our customers. Now we historically hear of that kind of thing, like regenerative braking in a hybrid car. So is, is that what's happening here? The motors are still spinning and you just run them as generators? You got it, exactly. That's, ex that's precisely how it works. All right, that's interesting. Now, it's normally for, of course, smaller robotics, you don't think of energy savings as being a big component, but I imagine you burn some juice in something this size. Yeah, as you can see, this thing's flying around back and forth. It's carrying a heavy payload. So all that momentum really generates a lot of, uh, a lot of forces that we can take advantage of. And speaking of momentum, in this case, uh, the end of arm tooling for an application like this is very large. It's quite heavy. That's a big inertial mass to be swinging back and forth in these things. It's, uh, it's, what kind of payload would you expect to move with a machine like this? So this robot's rated to carry a maximum of 180 kilogram payload, but we have robots that can carry up to 700 kilograms to do this type of application. In fact, our largest robot can carry one and a half metric tons and reach over four meters. It's a monster. Now, in this case, we're looking at palletization of, of uh, two wildly different kinds of product. We've got uh, cartons, a classic sort of smooth, hard wall surface, right. and sacks here, which is uh, probably the worst case scenario I can imagine in every case, especially for, for our vacuum gripper in this case. Uh, is, is there any limits to the kind of thing you can pick in place with this? A lot of our integrator partner companies are very creative in the design that they come up with for end effector grippers. Uh, Icon Robotics designed this one. Um, and yeah, as you point out, and rightly so, it can, it's designed to carry uh, multiple packages, different types, bags, boxes. Uh, actually, you know, end effectors can carry a variety of sizes. Some people come and see this and they, they wonder if only one size box can be carried by that gripper. But actually it's flexible that it can carry you know, large boxes and small boxes uh, with the same gripper. Dan, we're looking at a, um, a food products, consumer goods application, typically classic palletization strategy. What industries typically would, would be interested in this type of setup? Yeah, food is probably the largest uh, user of this type of application, but uh, any type of uh, materials that can be palletized. Uh, we've been talking to customers today that need to palletize furniture. Uh, you can palletize you know, bags of concrete. You know, Lots of things are possible. And uh, in terms of training and setup, uh, what does it take to learn to operate this? An operator, a programmer is familiar with a much smaller pick and place Kawasaki robot. Does that knowledge transfer to this? Uh, absolutely. It's using the exact same interface. Uh, the programming teach pendant on this robot is the same as our smaller robots, and even our large super monster robots uh, use the same exact interface. So once you're trained on a Kawasaki robot, you can use any of the uh, robots in our lineup. Uh, and the training is very simple. It takes uh, you know, three or four days class, and you're ready to roll. Uh, Dan, as some of the mass media, people who are not industry, industry professionals, uh, they're still selling a line that, that industrial automation like this kills jobs. What's the reality? Yeah. Well, most of the people that come to a trade show like this are looking to solve a problem in their manufacturing. And a big problem that uh, a lot of manufacturers are having right now is actually finding labor to do these types of jobs. Robots are designed to do repetitive jobs that are dangerous for people to do over time. And uh, you know, when they just can't find people to stay with those jobs, uh, robots are a perfect solution. Uh, actually, uh, that enables their employees to, to take the next step up and you know, train on how to use the robot. Now, instead of lifting boxes uh, today, they're programming a robot tomorrow. Palletization, an essential component of many production operations, Easily automated, says Dan Hazley, Director of Sales and Marketing at Kawasaki Robotics.